Hi everybody, this is Rat Hole Cat back at you again with another cool video. Well, today, well, it is a cool video, but today, it's a hot day. <laughs> oh my God, it's so hot out. It's, it's not just hot, it's humid. I've been outside for three seconds and I'm already sweating, yuck. But nevertheless, let's get this video started. So you saw the thumbnail, you saw the title. This is a big day. This is another big day for the Charger Hellcat. A big day for me getting the 2021 Dodge Durango Hellcat. This is a huge stepping stone, a huge stepping stone. It's gonna save some time for when we do pick up the Durango Hellcat in a couple of weeks. And good news is, the good news is, is that the Durango Hellcat did not get flooded. The Durango Hellcat did not get flooded. As you, I'll put the link in the description, but there was this huge, huge rainstorm in Detroit. They got six inches of rain. And during that storm, the Jefferson plant, yes, the Jefferson plant where my Durango Hellcat was built, the Jefferson plant and the shipping yard, no less, which was right where my Durango Hellcat has been now. And the unbelievable happened during the rainstorm, the shipping yard got flooded. Now they have one of six shipping yards in the Jefferson plant and the one shipping yard got flooded where it was about a hundred Jeep Grand Cherokees and Dodge Durangos got totally destroyed by water, by flood water. So much so that you saw a few of them floating away. It was terrible. And for four days, four days, I was worried whether or not my Dodge Durango Hellcat was flooded, was drowned, was destroyed. I just got word from the dealer yesterday that the Dodge Durango Hellcat survived. It did not get flooded, it is good to go. I'm definitely getting the Durango Hellcat, it's definitely coming in and it's definitely not total. So what are we doing today? Well, again, you saw the thumbnail, you saw the title. We're gonna save some time in me picking up the Durango Hellcat by getting the Charger Hellcat appraised. Yes, we're gonna get the Charger Hellcat appraised by the dealership that I'm gonna be trading the Charger Hellcat into. As you well know, I've extended at least one month so I could trade in the Hellcat and not turn in the Hellcat. That's what I told him. I said, I'm not turning in the Hellcat. You are gonna buy it. We're gonna have some equity to put towards the Durango Hellcat. And that's what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna get the appraisal. I've already gotten a couple of appraisals from Carvana and from Vroom. Vroom came back with an appraised value of 59,500. Will the dealership be able to beat 59,500? Who knows, who knows? Well, let's hope so, because the buyout on the Charger Hellcat, right around 50,000. My buyout originally was $48,000. And then when you add the sales tax that I would have to pay if I were to buy it and sell it to Broom, my buyout is right around 50,000, maybe 50,000, almost 51,000. So if I sell it to Vroom, I'm guaranteed to make $8,000. Let's see what they come back with. Let's see what they come back with. That's what we're gonna be doing now. Right now, I'm really starting to melt out in the sun. So let's get going. Let's get this road trip started. We're gonna be driving to the dealership. I'm gonna bring you for the ride. Also, we may even throw in a bonus. I, I might even get this thing car washed and maybe record it. I don't know, who knows, who knows? Don't know if I'm gonna do it yet, but we're gonna take off in about five minutes and I'll bring you along for the ride as we drive to Ramsey Dodge. This is where we're buying it from, Ramsey Dodge. It will Ramsey Dodge appraise my Charger Hellcat for the price that I'm looking for within the Varun price. We might have to do a little negotiation, but I'm telling you, it's a lot easier to trade this in at the dealership than to deal with all the paperwork and all the stress of having a third party buy it, even if it is Varun. So without further ado, I'm melting. Let's get started. We don't want to have these intros that long. We need to get to the video. So without further ado, I'll meet you in the car. We're off to the dealership. Let's go. Last car wash? Who knows? But well, we gotta make sure it's nice and clean to get it appraised. So we already did the inside. Now we're just doing another quick exterior, wheels and tires, and uh, and then off to the dealership. So all right, ready to rock and roll, and then see you on the other side.
Guys, beat me. I got. I, I tried to get outside before uh, you pulled it out, but and I didn't even get a chance to watch your wife because the app was giving me a hard time. So I just wanted to document. This is the last, probably one of the last times I get it watched. So trading it in. Okay. Uh, I'm getting appraised today. Appraisals today, but next week I'm going to trade it in for the Durango Hellcat. Yeah. Are you trading it in? Not yet. I'm gonna. I'm going to the dealership right now. So that's, that's the game plan. Get it washed, bring it to the dealership, get it appraised. They'll give me an appraisal today, and then, to, then next week, I'm going to get the Durango hotel. Guys, we'll be washing that one next. What deal are you using, Dylan? Excuse me? What deal are you doing? Uh, the, the only one that could get me an allocation was Ramsey. I, I, I heard about that, too. Yeah, Ramsey got me the allocation. Fullerton couldn't get me an allocation for the Durango. They got me a red eye there. They ordered the Charger Red Eye. I got the Charger Red Eye. I came in. I canceled it. Because I wanted the Durango and I can't have both. So so now I'm going to Ramsey. Ramsey is the only one to get the allocation because it's a limited production model. Right, yeah. It's one year only, only making 3000 They were only going to make for 2000 Then they expanded the allocation. They expanded the allocation to, th to 3000 And they're going to continue building them until November. They were going to stop building them this month. And then I had a pack attack over the weekend because... My Durango Hellcat's been built. It's been sitting in the shipping yard, and one of the shipping yards got flooded out because they had all those rains in Detroit. So one of the ship yards got flooded out. They lost about 100 Durangos and Grand Cherokees, and I thought mine was one of them, but it's not. They just confirmed it. Actually, all right, I'm going to take this to the dealers. i got to see you next, next week, hopefully with the Durango. All right, we're on our way, boys and girls. We're on our way to Ramsey Dodge. Join me for the ride. Got a little traffic action here. We're gonna be able to open it up in a second. Down the open road here, gonna run around these trucks. Let her eat. Here we go. All right, without further ado, join me for the ride. We'll see you at the dealership in about two to three minutes. adventure on 287 going north for construction we're about a couple miles from the dealership in fact we're 1.4 miles from the dealership ah it's gonna happen man i can't believe after having this car for three years you know sometimes you think you're gonna have a car forever but 
this car has been pretty good. So can't complain, but we're gonna get it appraised. It's the next step in the process. The only difference is that if it were, if I were doing this at Fullerton, it would have taken me literally five minutes to get to that dealership where this dealership's a good hour away. So but that's the difference between getting allocation and not getting allocation. So without further ado, we're almost there. We're like a half a mile away. Obviously I've been here before. I got the track hawk here. It is, it's coming up on the right. So this is the dealership right here. And navigation isn't accurate because navigation takes me beyond this point. But luckily I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing and we are here. So we're at Ramsey Dodge. We're gonna look for a parking spot. Get the cheap Cherokees. Uh, you got a couple of Durangos. You can see all the cool vehicles. So you get a bunch of Ram trucks. Well, they got tons of these things. Look at these things. We don't care. We make our own rules. So I want to park the car here. Somebody else. I'm going to park right there. Okay, we're here. We're at the dealership. Got some cool cars to record. Looks good. We got a scat pack. We got a TRX to record right now. I'm going to take a tour of the dealership also. We have to do the business at hand. The business at hand is getting the Hellcat appraised. So, we got the Hellcat shirt on. Forgot to mention that in the intro. But now that we're here, let's get the equipment ready, get to recording, and above and beyond all else, get this thing appraised. Give you an idea we got a scat pack right there we got a trx right there so we're gonna have to check that one out so a lot going on there in this dealership right now so we will go inside get our bearings and we're at ramsey chrysler dodge jeep ram yeah as we're waiting for henry i guess they're gonna let him know i'm outside and of course we have the ram trx so if i wanted to a TRX in white, there it is for me to buy. Obviously, we're not going to get this, but we should have an idea of what that looks like. Take a better look at the TRX. It's hard to get a view here with the. There we go. Supercharged, Hellcat engined, Ram pickup truck. What's the list price on this bad boy? 93000 This thing's loaded. This thing's loaded. But you got the. The red accent interior. Yep. Yes, sir. It's hard to tell because it's, again, sealed. Looks like this thing's going to be delivered soon because, I don't know, maybe this still is for sale. It just happens to be outside. This thing wouldn't fit in the showroom floor. <laughs> so, very cool, very cool. Got a scat pack in white. Got a scat pack in frostbite. Scat pack in black. And a scat pack in tour red. And one of the scat packs has the shaker hood. And the other ones have the legacy Hellcat hood, which is kind of, it's kind of cool to put the Hellcat hoods on the scat packs now. None of these are wide bodies, however. So you can either buy a brand new scat pack or you can buy my Hellcat. So, all right, there's not much else to see out here. We're just going to wait for Henry to come in come outside as I'm baking here. Or maybe we'll go inside. You know what, let's go inside. I'm getting hot out here. There's not much else to see. Maybe there's more to see inside. So without further ado, I'll meet you inside. You know, I got the equipment. You gotta stay true to the channel. All right, took some shots out here. You got the Hellcat, TRX. Henry's the man. Henry's my is my sales rep here. Oh, come upstairs. Come upstairs. Don't trip. What's up, buddy? What's up, my man? All right. How are you? Wow. Oh, cool. <laughs> this is awesome. All right. So you got what? What is this? Oh, it's a Jaguar. All right. Jaguar. Oh, you got a Scat Pack wide body. You got a Challenger TA. Oh, we'll take a closer look at the. Just real quick, we'll take a closer look at that. Yeah. We'll look at this. We'll look at this more closely later, but very similar to mine. 
This is black, triple black. This is black with the black package, black interior. Oh yeah, this is gonna, this is nice. We'll take a closer, closer, closer look in a second. I'm sure there's gonna be some downtime. And we'll take a closer look. Very nice, very nice. You know, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna like the suede. Looks really nice, feels good. Looks really nice in here. It's not, it doesn't have the premium package, but that's okay. What's this one this for? This is 89,000, so it's about 6,000 less than mine. Nice. Harman Kardon. Yeah. It doesn't have the premium group, so it's got the elephant skin dash, which is fine. Take a look at the outside again. Very nice, very nice. Oh yeah, this is sweetness. Sweetness. Oh yeah. This is good stuff, good stuff. Love the Hellcat logo embroidered, it really pops. Got the sunroof? Yep, got a sunroof. Harman Kardon. It's really the basics. I don't know where the pack, it doesn't have red seat belts, of course. It doesn't have the center console in the back. That's okay too. But this is, these seats are nice. They're actually nicer than I thought they would be. Oh yeah, I think I made a good choice by getting the, these seats. Very cool, very nice. Mandy, you just had some people pull out a compass? Henry's waiting for me, so we'll do business with him in a second. Awesome. Red calipers. Love the black package rims. Black package logos. Sweet. All right. All right, we gotta sit in real quick. Comfortable, grippy. Woo, we're in heaven. This is gonna be nice. Like I said, I'm glad I got the better dashboard. This is gonna be, this part right here is gonna be suede. This is gonna be leather wrapped. It's not leather wrapped right now. And this one, had a good look of this. We may take a better look later, but this is the Durango Hellcat, so. Let's go meet up with Henry. See what we got going. Zandy, this is the, this is my original sales rep who sold me the Trackhawk. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I don't want the credit though. It's know. okay. It's all good. It's all good. So if it wasn't for Andy, we wouldn't have the track haul. But it's all good. It's all good. So now between Andy and Henry, I'm getting the Durango Hellcat. Yes. Now we just have to work out the deal with the Charger Hellcat and we'll be good to go. Lots of cats. A lot of cats. A lot of cats. Lots lots of cats. cats. That's right. That's right. So you guys are going to be on the channel. You're going to be famous. I still have the video when I went in that track haul. Oh, yeah? Oh, you still have it? I <laughs> It's probably in your favorite somewhere, I'm sure. I actually just watched it recently because I was like, "Oh, look at that!" We were uh, we were cooking on the one on the one pole. Look at this. This last one I think is good. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> on ramp. You see it? Oh yeah, the on ramp pole was cool. How fast was I going? Who knows? I think. You're, you know, Who knows? <laughs> Camera on camera action. Yeah, well, that's, that's in Mexico, right? <laughs> <laughs> Undisclosed location. Look at that. That thing was so much fun. Oh, yeah. Well, Look. we're going to do the same thing in the uh, Durango Hellcat. For there sure. you go. There you go. Yep. Same thing in the Durango Hellcat. I remember. Yeah, man. That's awesome. All right, cool. Good to see you. All right, good to see you too. And yeah. I guess we'll work out some numbers on the charger, and I'll be back when the Durango comes in. Which will be Durango coming any day now. Any day? Right, me, okay, we're out here with Henry. He's gonna appraise my Charger Hellcat, and then we're gonna go for a ride. Look at that badass Jeep! Damn, that thing's nice. That thing's nice. We're gonna pop the hood real quick. Let's go take a look at it. Wow, this is clean. Mint, clean. I keep my vehicles <laughs> mint and clean. Dude, this is like showroom ready. Yes. I mean, the only thing I couldn't get clean is like the dirt that's inside these sockets, and I just couldn't get a vacuum in there. But. Nope. Nah, they're gone, man. 
Sometimes I get them in the wintertime, but they, they're gone by springtime. Yeah, I'm very meticulous. I mean, there's a little dust there, but I mean, you could even do that. You won't get dirt on your hands. I keep my vehicles clean and keep them nice. Yeah, it's like, sometimes this gets dirty too. Again, you can touch any part of this car with your hand, you won't get dirty. It's just maintenance, you know? Yeah. I'll do that every other week. I'll, I'll get it washed. I get it washed once a week, whether I drive it or not. I have an unlimited wash at a car wash by me. So basically I can bring it in every day if I wanted to. Gotcha. But I don't, I bring it in once a week, even if I don't drive it. And then the interior is mint. I'm the only one that's usually in it. Barely have any passengers. So the, this the, is very, very, this is probably the Laguna leather is nice. The, the back seats probably sat in three times. Just because when I have the family, I usually don't take people out to lunch anymore because of COVID. But in the back, trunk's clean. I mean, there's. This is the nice thing about the weather tech. Notice it, you, it is not perfect yeah. with the weather tech, but if the carpet underneath, that's all that really matters. So you. Yeah, <laughs> I had tint on this. I had tinted the side markers. I tinted the tail lights, but then I took the tint off. I wanted to bring it back to stock. Uh, the only warranty work that was done. The, the door panels are brand new, as I was telling Raz. The door panels were replaced by Dodge for free because it was covered under warranty because they're defective. The rear stripes were replaced because there was a defect on those. But everything else, and because of the way I drive, which isn't like a, an idiot, the tires are still original. Very nice car, man. Yeah, thanks. All right, now we're gonna go for a ride. So let me get the bag in the car. All right, let me pause this, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back online. <laughs> I got Henry in the car. I was just reviewing with him how I start the car. So basically, make a long story short, I started in eco mode and I double tapped it to put it in 707. Now we're going with all the other different settings. So my custom setting, you just missed it. My custom is 707 power, transmission support, paddle shifters on, traction at street, because I want the most traction possible, and then suspension is also on street because I wanted the best ride. Yeah. It's just too rough. So that being said, you ready to rock? Yep. Let's go. Right. The other thing I turn on are the performance pages. The performance pages what that'll do is it'll calculate zero to 60 times it'll calculate quarter mile times here and then it keeps me all the gauges like i always try to keep an eye on my air intake especially when it's this hot the timers so these are you have current timers you have last timers and you have best timers so the best timers i've had so far is zero to 60 in four seconds oh wow okay but that's on the track uh -huh. and i've only been on the track once with this thing regular times driving this around the best i can do is like 5.2 gotcha. the reason why is because the tires spin mm -hmm. trying to get the most traction or you're not hitting the gas enough it's like a fine line you're either hitting it too much where you're spinning or you're not hitting enough to go mm -hmm. so that's why i can only get 5.2 in the track walk i can do 3.6 okay wow. the eighth mile means nothing because i never really do eighth mile this is my best quarter mile and I, like i said i was only on the track once 11.9 which was really 11.88 at 122 miles an hour. Okay, so all those fun rides you have in the track hawk that, that Andy recorded. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the the track hawk is a beast from zero to 100. Yeah. This is a beast only after 60 miles an hour. Gotcha. So that just gave me, that, maybe that was like quarter throttle. Yeah. And notice how the tires already spun. Yeah. So that's why it's it's hard. I mean, the whole point of going fast or having 700 horsepower is that you can put the power down and go quick and have fun. There's no fun in spinning the tires. Spinning the tires does two things. One is it slows you down. And number two is it puts excess wear and tear on the tires and everything else. And, yeah. and you're not going fast. It's just aggravating. Plus, and that's in a straight line. If you're, mm -hmm. if you're in a turn in the tire spin, you're gonna have a crash. You're gonna have an accident. I've learned all the things that it can do and all the things that it can't, and I stay within those boundaries. Gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah. Like, even if, even if I goosed it here for a little bit. 
<laughs> so if I just give it a little goose like that, I had to let off of it. Notice how it kicked out? Yeah. I had to let off of it because if I didn't, I would have gone around the 360. Yep. So I have to basically hit the gas so I can still maintain the traction. All right. Sometimes you see that cars have miles on it, and it sometimes you feel that the car is getting slower and slower, but not this. The, the potential of this car is unlimited, and I don't even think I've taken this thing to the max potential. The only really, the only real way to take this car to max potential is to put 18-inch, 17-inch wheels on it with racing slicks on the back, do a nice smoky burnout, and then launch it. That's that's where you get the max out of this. But then it's not a street car anymore; it's a race car. Okay, we hit three digits. <laughs> That's that should be good. Did you record that? Yeah. yeah nice. in the limits even just now I did, did slip a little bit did, notice how I got off of it yeah so I couldn't get the but but you you have to get a feel for it yeah. I've got I, I've mastered the car so even then when we did that last pull it slipped and I felt it and then you, you have to let off if you don't let off of it you're gonna crash gotcha I mean these cars are great I don't know what a scat pack is like I don't know how much if you could do the same flooring and doing that stuff with the scat pack, I don't know. Well, I, what I do know is no issues whatsoever with the track wall. Never had an issue with traction. The only time I've ever like even slipped the tires is if I floor it from a stop and it's raining. Okay. Uh, can we do another pull? Yeah, do another pull. Ready? Shifts yeah. automatically. That's sport transmission. It that's just on, which is nice. So when you're getting on it, just like I did now, the, the keep it in automatic mode. It knows exactly when to shift and downshift. Mm -hmm. But when you're on the highway cruising, it's always in eighth gear. And if you want to accelerate, say if you want to pass somebody, mm -hmm. it doesn't know where to, what gear to downshift to. Sometimes it'll downshift to seven. Sometimes it downshifts to six, which is fine. Six gear is safe. That's what I usually use on the track one. Gotcha. But what this car does is if I'm in eighth gear and I get on it to pass somebody, it'll downshift to fourth. And then it's a handful because it could lose traction. And I don't have any control over that. That's why I use the paddle shifters. I use the paddle shifters when I'm on the highway. Gotcha. But just tooling around on the regular roads, automatic mode is fine. I didn't scare you yet today. They never put in adaptive cruise control. Yeah. But they did put adaptive cruise control. It is available on a Challenger with a 707 horsepower setting. Or 717. You can get the, the adaptive cruise. That's the only Hellcat you can get it on two-wheel drive. The red eyes you can't get at adaptive cruise. The chargers you can't get adaptive cruise, whether it's the red eye or not. The other but what's nice about the track hawk is it has not only the adaptive cruise, but if you're going ahead. And I'm pretty good at driving, so I'll hit the brakes when needed. Yeah. But say if you don't have, if you have a driver that's not as aware as me, and gets too close to a car, you could be applying the brake. But if it thinks that you're not applying the brake enough, the car will take over and hit the brakes for you. Yep. All right, we'll try. It. Ready? Mm -hmm.
again, I had to let off of it. You yeah, feel that? Yeah, I felt it. I had to let off. It's like, oh, man, I had it. And then the, it, it's, I don't even know why it does that. I mean, I don't know if it senses, like, it, it, should I turn around here? No, you oh, got to look Oh, we've been, yeah. we drove too far. How do you like it? Yeah, we drove, it, it, it's like, I am, it pisses me off when it does that. Yeah. Because I really wanted to get a good pull in, but if it starts to slip. Brembo brakes are awesome. Oh yeah. Never had a problem with the brakes. Yeah, I mean this freaking car is such a perfect car for someone who wants a Charger Hellcat. Yeah. I've graduated, I've had it for three years. That's it, I'm done. Durango Hellcat. I mean, that's why I balked on the, the red eye. I mean, the if this car has issues getting traction with 700 horsepower, and I and granted, I know the wide bodies have 305s on the, all four corners, but 305s aren't even enough, enough traction even for 700 horsepower. What's 800 horsepower like? That's why, I mean, the red eyes are great, and empowered to anybody who gets a red eye, that's fine for you guys that want one, and that's great. They make them. They make it. You want to buy it? That's great. Great for the drag strip. Yeah, I only did that for one event. It was a YouTube event, but I don't have a track that's near me where I can just go every weekend. And it's the only time it's ever, ever any fun is if you go every weekend. I had a Mustang GT, and I did that every weekend when I was younger, back in my youth. And that car is great, but for everyday driving, to, to have something that's that's nice to drive every day, and then you can get on it and not have to worry about traction or worrying about losing control. All-wheel drive is the best way to go. They don't have an all-wheel drive Challenger. There's no all-wheel drive Charger. And up until 2021, the only game in town was the Trackhawk. Now, all of a sudden, you have three. You have the Trackhawk, the Durango Hellcat, and even the TRX. We passed yeah. the dealership yet? Uh, we passed the dealership, but we have to make a U-turn. So yeah. that was one of the U-turns. There's another U-turn coming up. That makes sense. <laughs> I, no, that's all right. Another thing I like to do... I didn't do it just now. I'll, I'll roll down the window. I'll kick it. I'll put it in manual mode. I'll put it in the fourth gear and then gun it under a bridge. It sounds awesome. Oh, really? You got to watch it. I got a POV video, which I did that on YouTube. And then I have another recorded POV video that I haven't even put on YouTube yet. And it's all about me driving under bridges and tunnels and, and against walls. And it just sounds amazing. I can imagine, like in a bridge or like the Lincoln Tunnel or something. Got you. Okay, makes sense. All right, here we go. One more time. I let it slip that time, but that is that is just it's just unsafe to do that. Yeah. Now, this what I did with you just now. I'll do this anytime I'm recording, but I mean, if I'm not recording it, it's not worth driving it like that. Yeah. And I just don't drive it like that ever. Because I'm really nice to my vehicles. I try to be good to my vehicles. I know the power's there. I know what it can do. I just don't have to do it all the time. And again, just driving it like this is fun. And usually just rolling down the window and listening to the exhaust, listening to the wine, that gives me thrills as well. But the car wouldn't be in the condition it was in if I beat on it all the time. So that's another thing. I'm an adult driver, I'm not a kid. But I'm telling you, if you had a Charger Hellcat in the showroom, mm -hmm. or even on the lot, and take that one out for a ride, and then take this one out right after, you couldn't tell the difference. There's, I don't know if you noticed it, because I, I, it all depends on how sensitive people's noses are. Mm -hmm. I don't notice it anymore, but as, as much as maybe last January, I had someone in this car, and they asked me, how new is the car? I said, it's about three years old, why? He said, it still smells like a new car inside. So I said, you, are you telling me that it has the new car scent? Still, he says, yeah, it smells like a new car. Uh, I don't know if you smell that. I, I mean, it, 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 it could smell like a new car. A new car has that plastic smell to me, but it doesn't have that plastic smell. Well, I guess it's the leather too. So, yeah. so the other, I guess the reason why is because I usually have the windows sealed all the time. That's another thing I don't do. As much as you have windows and you put them down, blah, blah, blah. I usually, all the time, keep the windows up. I never park the car with the windows down. So 
no outside air gets into the car, no pollen, no nothing. Allergens, all that stuff. Yeah. So this keeps the car pristine and new inside too. I mean, I barely keep the car clean on the inside. It just, it just stays clean on its own. It's amazing. So what'd you think, man? I like it, man. I like it. I, it's very cool. So we just have to work on that. But well, we already know what the final appraisal is. I'm going to share you, with you the final appraisal and final thoughts in a moment because we have a lot to talk about in the driveway. But I'll meet you back in the driveway. I think we're, I'm going to go and take more videos. They have a Dodge Durango Hellcat in the showroom. I'm going to get some footage for you in there. I'll make that a separate video, of course. But definitely, definitely, definitely reach out to Henry, man. At Ramsey Dodge Jeep Ram. Henry's Jeep, the man. Ram, Chrysler, whatever. We're going to see him when we pick up the Durango Hellcat. But Absolutely. just in case this video comes out first, definitely hook up. With Henry and we got TRXs in stock. Yes, there's a white TRX in there. Right. In fact, that is going to be blue, part of this video. Blue and a red. Oh, I take that back. The Durango Hellcat is going to be part of this video. Was part of this video. The TRX is part of this video, and the Scat Packs as well. I already told him we have a white Scat Pack, mm -hmm. Frostbite, black, and I guess that was Tor Red. Yep. Yep. So yep. we got them all at once. We got roughly somewhere between uh, one time around 30 Scat Packs all at one shot. Um, it came in all on the truck. It nice. was amazing. We didn't get any Hellcats, but we got the Scat Packs here. We That's got great. Them. We have those Scat Packs. We got some TRXs in stock, which is amazing. We got a Durango Hellcat. Had a couple of them. They all win already. We got some more coming in order. Now, you we still have the, Hellcats you, coming soon. You still have the, the Granite Crystal? Or is that gone? I think the Granite Crystal is gone. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because on your website, it shows the Granite Crystal is still on the website, but, yeah. but the black one's gone. Yeah, the Granite Crystal one was actually in here, and it's not in there anymore, so it must be gone. Things go so quickly, it's hard to keep track. Well, I want to check it. I want to go check out the Durango Hellcat again because I didn't get a lot of time in it, and it has my interior. Yep, it does. It doesn't have the exterior, but it has the interior. It has the interior. So <laughs> we're going to investigate that a little bit more because we already were in Brian's Durango Hellcat with the regular Guna. So okay, cool. So let's do that. Yeah, let's go inside. We're going to go inside. See, see inside.
Sweet. Another successful surgery. Uh, is this Phil? He's got a 2021 RT, right? Yeah, RT with a tone glove. So he did the. He did a 22 inch wheel the package. Wheels look awesome. So he did the red inserts. This is the torch red from the. Oh, nice. Yep. Clear powder. So he clear powdered over it. Yeah. Wow. Final result. That is sweet. Yeah. And then we go. And we see the there. final product in the in the driveway. That is really sharp. I mean, from a distance, you couldn't even tell it's not an SRT. Right? Yeah. Oh no, because I ended up doing uh, the suspension, like a uh, Mopar. Oh, okay. Mopar makes the suspension on it. Yeah. So I went ordered, even though it has the Bilstein shocks and everything, yeah. I went to parts and I got the lowering springs and then I lowered it even more. So it came down another inch. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it sits perfect. So I don't know right if I'll now. do that just yet with the Durango mm -hmm. only because I know that lowering it, well, they can do the Mopar springs. It rides perfect. But can you still tow with it? Yeah, it's perfect. It's really? perfect. I tow. I have a pontoon. A that was my biggest concern boat. because if you towed with it, I've seen the stock springs get squatted down so much I was afraid it was going to rub on the tires. Not with the Bilsteins. It levels out. Okay. That thing sits perfect, bro. Nice. And it tows mint. Yeah. All right. Yep. It aligns perfect. It dries perfect. You can drive over potholes. It's not like, you know, jarring like typically when you lower a car. It's do you so know my spec on the Durango Hellcat? The spec? Yeah, like the, all the options. No, I didn't look at it. Yeah, so it'll be almost identical to that. Because that one's black, with yep. black package. Yeah. Black suede interior. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to get the red seat belts. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get the premium package. So it's the carbon fiber inserts, the suede yep. on the dash, yep. suede headliner. You did the headliner too? Yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing I did. I did the DVDs for the kids yeah. and everything, the TVs. I didn't do Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I, I got every available option except for the DVD player and the three season tires. Okay. I, and I got the center console, the console in the back with yeah. the captain's chairs. I didn't go with the lightweight package, which was a consideration. Lightweight package? The lightweight package is where they delete the third row. Oh. And they put the bench seat in its place. Oh. And I wouldn't have wanted that. If they had deleted no. the third row and maybe kept the captain's chairs, I would have considered that. Yeah, I did or, captain's. Right, so two, two, and then the third. So yeah. I kept it. So I kept it. I kept it the third row because yeah. I already have the track walk. Yeah. And the track walk's got the two seats yeah, so it's in the, the bench. Right? That's right. I didn't want it to be that much the same because the only difference would be the extra length. Mm -hmm. So this is going to give it more, a little bit more diversity. But yeah. And then I got the, uh, the, the Mopar Silver Stripes. So oh, silver stripes perfect. on the black. On the black, and I thought the silver stripes would be good with the silver accent stitching on the interior. Yeah. The only thing that if I wanted to do it over again, I probably would have gone Red Laguna, because I'm afraid I had, I don't know this for a fact yet, but then people on the forums that thought there was black leather, because people on the forums like there's a Durango Hellcat form. Yeah. And a lot of the people that were getting their Durangos, they were told by the dealership that you either can get black. Or red leather. They were never told that it was red leather and black suede. They thought right. the black was also red black laguna. Uh, there is no black laguna option. So, so it's they red were getting and black down on the side. Right. Way. So they were had issues because they're gonna have kids <clears throat> in the car, they're gonna have dogs in the car, and they felt that the dog hair would, would be attracted the, the suede mm -hmm. would stick to it. Yeah. So they all they went all the way up to Tim Kaniscus. Tim Kaniscus is the CEO of Dodge. He was the, one of the directors of SRT, but then the SRT got disbanded. So now he's like the interim CEO of Dodge. So they escalated all the way up to him because these cars, these Durangos were already up to D1 status. Yeah. And once they're in D1, you can't make any changes. Right. He got the changes done. So three people that had black suede got switched to Red Laguna. And if they're that desperate, because we all like, we all said the same thing. We didn't want red interior. I'm not a red interior guy. Mm. The other thing that I was- I did the red with mine. So is that, is that, is that Laguna or? I'll show you. Because the problem with the Red Laguna is the other is so soft. Here's what we did the first time with the oh. wheels, with the red dish. Oh, wow. Right, instead of the red inserts, I did the candy apple red dish, just so you, so you would see the faintly okay. in the background, right? But what happened was, as soon as the brake dust got Oh, there, they turned black. It, it completely, you couldn't even just, see just it. so you couldn't even tell it was a waste. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, so here's the interior. Oh, that's sharp. See, that's got a little more black in it. Right. I love it, personally. See, the thing that was a problem with the Red Laguna for me was I saw two SRTs in my dealership, the local dealership that I did for service, Fullerton. They had two used SRTs this year, but they had the Red Laguna leather. And I said, let me look at the Red Laguna one more time. I opened the door, and I was shocked to see that it wasn't red anymore. The seats were purple. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, because the, they said the Red Laguna, because it's so soft, well, well it's the gene transfer. Oh. The gene, oh, when, when blue you have gene. fresh blue jeans? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. yeah. So that was my issue, that I didn't want to deal with that, because they said that sometimes you can get out, sometimes you can't, or even when you try to get it out, then it ruins the, the red underneath. When you rub it Yeah, you, rub, you take a magic eraser to get the ink off, but then yeah. you're then, you're taking some of the red dye off as well. I didn't want to deal with that. I've seen black suede in an SRT here when I was here the last time and they said it was like a three-year-old vehicle and the interior the, the suede looked brand new so that's kind of what I was going for I want to try something different I got a track off downstairs that the guy clearly did not clean it at all and it's got black and it looks fine it looks okay. like perfect not yeah. even a wrinkle yeah not a wrinkle that's it not yeah. a wrinkle it hasn't discolored I mean you can see that he the chrome lug nuts are black put it that way the yellow calipers are black black you don't you can't even tell that they're oh. yellow it was a track hog. i thought it was, track it was an SRT. No, oh. it's right downstairs. um but the guy didn't abuse it he just never cleaned it he yeah. neglected it yeah. Yeah. you know what i mean my he track hog's services not garage all the services are done yeah my my track hog's not garage kept but yet it still looks like it's garage kept. yeah yeah do you, i i ended up uh doing the expel wrap and the ceramic coat I'm debating whether I should oh, do don't that. don't debate it. Don't debate it. Get it? I'm telling you. I'm a fanatic. I polish. I do all of this. What's yeah. better, though? The expel the or the ceramic? The and polish. I do everything. And I tell you what, man. No, I did both. I, I expel. You guys wrapped. offer that here? No, <laughs> I brought it down to uh, oh, okay. APC. I'll see. Okay. Awesome job. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll let you go because I'm going to go film the Durango right. inside. So Thanks, Either way, I'm getting the Durango. Yeah, buddy. I'm getting the Durango. <laughs> Either way, we'll figure it out. Yeah, man. All right, we'll see you in a week see or two. Way. Hell yeah. yeah so they're moving the TRX before I leave, so let's get a visual of that. You can't miss out on something like this. This is awesome. Saw me filming a little bit. You know, I was even going to go outside and film it some more, but it was just too windy. I said, ah, I can't do it out when it's so windy out. Yeah. So then when I saw you driving away, I said, at least I can get the sound of the engine. So you got three of them in here. Yeah. You got a red, hyper blue. Oh, I love the hyper blue. Yeah, it's, it's sweet. We just, yeah. Hyper blue, and we got the white one. He's going to start up the white one. It's going to, it's going to sound epic. But yeah, the hyper blue with the Ram bar. So that is the nicest color, I think, for the TRX. I know, I know a lot of people are working like that. I would get it in black, but I think all of the accents of the TRX get lost when you get it in black. I mean, yeah. you can't even tell it's a TRX from behind because it's so, there's not much contrast between, this is not an option is to make it any other color. And the Ram you can see, but the TRX you can't. Even with the decals, you can't make the decals any other color but black. So if you're getting a black one, you're just losing out. And I know the biggest contract is at the white, but I'm not a white person in terms of trucks or cars because it's just too hard to keep clean. And red, I'm not a red person either. <laughs> I'm not a red person, so the hyper blue is the way to go. That's the best color. Uh, let's give it a start. Yeah, man, this is awesome. Thanks for letting me do this. Deeper than a, it's a lot deeper than the Durango Hellcat or even the Charger. Yeah. Gonna give it a little red. Ah, oh. wow, that's stock.
All right, Mike. Good to meet you. Good to meet you too. Check me out on YouTube, and we'll see you in a couple weeks when I come pick up the Durango. Awesome. All right, thanks again. Final thoughts time, final thoughts time, final thoughts time. Yes, well, it's the next day because by the time I got home from the dealership, it was dark. It was too dark to record the final thoughts. So it's the next day. I'm recording the final thoughts today. It's a beautiful day today. Nice sunny day. So hopefully you're, you're enjoying your day. So let's talk about what we just experienced with the Charger Hellcat. Yes, we got the Charger Hellcat appraised. And now it's time for the big reveal, the big reveal on what this vehicle was appraised for. Drum roll, please. Well, <laughs> the appraisal for the 2018 Dodge Charger Hellcat with 7,485 miles is $59,000. $59,000, that's what I was offered for this awesome Charger Hellcat. Yes, well, it was a number I would agree to because back about a month prior, Room offered me $59,000, then they raised it to $59,500. So we're within $500 of Room. Now, they, my buy-in on this is $50,000. If I get $59,000 from the dealership, I'll get $9,000 net which is very cool, very cool. So $9,000 in equity goes towards the Dodge Durango Hellcat. So that is where we're at right now. Final thoughts time, final thoughts time, final thoughts time as to the experience at the dealership. It was great to meet in person Henry. I hadn't met him in person before. I did meet Andy before. Andy is the one that sold me the track hawk. Awesome guy, awesome dude. Glad that we got to see him on video today. So it was very cool to meet. Henry, it was very cool to see Andy again. It was very cool to see the vehicles we got to see. Come on, man. We got to see some really cool vehicles. We got to see a wide-body Scat Pack. We got to see a, a wide-body TA Challenger. We got to see a 2021 Dodge Durango Hellcat that they had on the showroom floor. It was close to my spec, but wasn't exact because I had a lot more options on mine. But I hope you enjoyed seeing that. We might actually also see a video that I'll put together later on with the RAL Hellcat walk around with the Dodge Durango Hellcat as a standalone video. Also, we got to see the 2021 Ram TRX. Not one, not two, but three TRXs. That, I gave you some little uh, bits and pieces of that one. That was a pretty long video. I spent a lot of time with those three vehicles and I'll have that as a separate standalone video when we do another RAL Hellcat walk around video. So the best part, the best part, in addition to getting the appraisal, was taking Henry for a ride. Taking Henry for a ride in the Hellcat was awesome. Henry, hope you enjoyed the ride. It was really a lot of fun for me to take for a ride. Telling you all the good things about the Hellcat, all the challenges with driving the Hellcat. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm, I'm sure he did. He was, he, he was, he was ecstatic. So it's something we can do as a separate video or a separate visit as opposed to doing, we couldn't do that if we were gonna take delivery of the Dodge Durango Hellcat because we would just wanna be in and out. That was the whole point of doing the, the trade-in and the appraisal today was, or yesterday, the whole point of doing that was to get all that stuff, all that shenanigans out of the way. And then this way, when we go and pick up the Dodge Durango Hellcat, it'll just be, see the Dodge Durango Hellcat, get all excited, say goodbye to the Charger Hellcat, do a little crying, get the paperwork signed, do a little more crying because I have to give them some money, and then I get the keys, it's gonna be happy, happy, joy, joy, and driving it home. Driving my new Dodge Durango Hellcat, driving it home. So, without further ado, I think those are enough final thoughts for this video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, we're gonna keep the outro nice and short and sweet. Please give it a thumbs up. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hope you enjoyed it trading in the Dodge Charger Hellcat, getting into praise, and having a lot of fun at the dealership while we were there. So please give it a thumbs up. Hope you enjoyed it. Also, put in the comment or two. Put in the comment or two. What was your experience when you get, got your Hellcat appraised, when you're trading in your Hellcat? What experience did you have trading in your Hellcat? What did you get it appraised for? What vehicle did you get? 
I really would like to know. Let me know in your comments. Put in a comment or two. Type some good stuff for me. And let me know what did you trade in and what did you get. Awesome job. Thank you very much for doing that. And I always, always, always respond to all my comments as you know that. Also, please share the video. Please share the video with everyone else. Share, share, share. Share the experience of me getting this Charger Hellcat appraised. Share the video with everyone you know that is trading in a Hellcat, is getting a new Hellcat, and they had their experience. If they want to know what the experience is like, definitely share this video with everyone that you know. And last but not least, please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. We're getting very close to 700 subscribers. Thank you again for all my current subscribers. We're well over 650 subscribers at the time of recording this video. So hopefully we'll have 700 subscribers very soon. And then once we get the Dodge Durango Hellcat, hopefully we'll have a thousand subscribers to celebrate with the Dodge Durango Hellcat and the Jeep Grand Cherokee Tricar. So definitely, without further ado, without further ado, please like comment, share, and subscribe. Without further ado, this video is now over. Hopefully you're enjoying your day today. It's a nice sunny day in New Jersey. Hopefully you'll enjoy the rest of your day after watching this video. Hopefully you'll enjoy the rest of your evening if you're watching it at night. Hope you have a fantastic day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your night. Peace to all of you. Stay safe out there. Stay safe. Always stay safe even with COVID. Hopefully you got your vaccinated. You're vaccinated. If you're vaccinated, you're good to go. If you're not vaccinated, just stay safe. Please stay safe. Please stay safe. Please stay safe. Please stay safe. And we'll catch you on the next video. So we have so much to look forward to. We have now, we are in our last final episodes of the Dodge Charger Hellcat. We are about to embrace our new chapter with the 2021 Dodge Durango Hellcat. So definitely, definitely, definitely. We'll catch up on all the videos coming up. We have more videos coming up with Brian and his Dodge Durango Hellcat. We have more videos coming up with the Trackhawk. I still have a lot of things recorded with the Dodge Charger Hellcat that I still have to put together and still have to edit and still have to put out. We'll put those out regardless. Don't forget, we have our new series. We have two new series that we're sharing with the channel that we already started putting those videos out. Ral Hellcat reviews. We have a few more reviews that have yet to be released. A couple of Jeep Wranglers that are really, really cool. Can't wait to get those out to you. Also, we have Ral Hellcat walkarounds. We have a cool walkaround with my Dodge Charger Red Eye that I can't wait to put out. Dodge Charger Red Eye that I ordered. We have a cool walkaround video on that. Plus, we also have a walkaround video with a unique vehicle that I almost would have bought if, if there was no such thing as a Dodge Charger Red Eye. And there was no such thing as a Dodge Durango Hellcat, then we would have gotten this vehicle, which is going to be a walk around video coming up very soon. And that is the 2020 Dodge Charger Hellcat Daytona. Did a walk around on that. It's a really cool video. E5 Blue, just like my shirt, E5 Blue. So definitely look forward to that. So without further ado, the last thing we have to do is peace out. So peace out. SRT Mush style. Peace, 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 peace. Thanks again for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace to all of you. Peace to all of you. Stay safe out there. And we'll catch you. We'll catch you on the next video. Whichever that may be, we're all, it's all about Ralph Hellcat channel. So it's all going to be about either more Charger Hellcat, Dodge Durango Hellcat, or Jeep Terrain Cherokee Track Hellcat. Catch you on the next one. One last piece. One, two, three. Boop, boop. This trying to tell them the facts of life that the dealership needs to have this payoff in their name. Oh my God, what is up with all these bugs?